I'm Chaitanya. I will be the trainer for you the next uh, 45 days of classes, AWS classes. So what we are going to learn in the AWS and all the things that we will learn. First of all, the agenda of today's classes will be what is cloud? And the second one is, uh, so what is the cloud services or else what are the cloud services that we have to understand these concepts. So uh, as per today's agenda, we need to complete these two things before going further. So everybody will be nowadays everyone are uh, hearing the word called as cloud aws azure gcp all these things now if you see here what is meant by cloud before you understand these things you need to have a brief looking towards your infrastructure so before you uh, before you learn about cloud or else what cloud is actually so previously several days before or several years before everybody will say that a cloud is a storage cloud is a storage where we will be storing the data so only to store the data we use the cloud but as of now what is happening as the days go on and as the years pass on the cloud has introduced so many services so we will discuss about that anyways so a cloud storage a cloud is basically is all about the storage where uh, anyways uh, this is completely for infrastructure as uh, as a, like we, we are going to discuss the cloud uh, regarding the infrastructure this is all uh, regarding the devops itself so if you are learning it is completely only about aws we are not discussing about the devops whatever the uh, whatever the course that you are learning in the next 45 days that will be completely about uh, AWS only it is not only not for the DevOps so the DevOps classes are different okay so you are a certified AWS developers that's fine so then these classes are not meant for this uh, so you are looking for this anyways we will discuss about that. Uh, uh, we will ping it out. Anyways, in the last 20 minutes of the time, uh, last 10 minutes of the time will be for your questionnaire. We will discuss all about all those things. But as of now, let us uh, dive into the uh, concepts that we are going to discuss. Okay. Anyways, coming back to the next one. Uh, yep. Nothing much. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I will try to uh, clear out all your doubts. Uh, who are not having any doubts regarding the cloud? We will discuss about all those uh, doubts in the next last 10 minutes of the session uh, where we are going to end at the time of ending of the session. We will discuss about all those things. Don't worry. Now, uh, when we go back to this, uh, everybody are thinking that the cloud is a storage. Uh, in the previous days, everybody are thinking that the cloud is a storage. Simply, if I have to say uh, the best example, so many people will take as Google Drive or else uh, OneDrive or else somewhere like uh, Microsoft Drive, so anything will come out of the cloud storage. Or they will thinking about that I can store the data into, into the cloud. But later on, what happened? The cloud has introduced so many services. And before we go for the AWS, first of all, you need to understand why we require cloud. What is the necessity that each and every company, nowadays, what is the necessity that each and every company are looking forward for cloud? So, uh, so every every startup company or also every uh, small range of companies are looking for cloud engineers or also Memens is also nowadays looking for the cloud engineers. What is the necessity for that? So before going for all those things, if you are any engineer, if you are an engineer in working in any IT firm, so everybody knows that for for running the IT services, you need to have servers. So you need to have the servers and uh, you need to have network and then you need to have the security appliances or all security devices, all these things you need to have. The collaboration of all these things, the collaboration of servers, net network and security, all these things will come under a particular locality or a particular, uh, what I can say, particular uh, room of uh, servers, then that is called as a data center where we are going to install all our servers. So servers, networking and security. So what is meant by a data center? 
So if you need to understand this before going for the cloud, we need to understand the data center architecture. What is meant by data center? So a data center is a place where a large amount of server racks are installed inside those server racks. We will have the physical servers. So what is meant by this data center? Now, as I already said you, and this data center will provide you about servers and it in inbuilt to the data center, we will have the network and this will provide you the security devices. All the security devices will be present inside the data center. Now, how a data center will be looking like physically, physically, how a data center will be looking like. So if I go here. So if you see, these are the server racks where your servers are getting installed. Is my screen visible to you? Is there any problem with the screen sharing? Yes, sir, visible, sir. No, it's visible. That's fine. So if you see here, these are the server racks or else these are the racks where inside your data center, where all your servers are getting installed. And not only the servers in these racks, you can install the uh, networking devices like routers and as well as the security devices like firewalls, everything will be installed inside these racks and all the racks are present inside a data center. Now, if I have to show you, it's a very, very huge uh, area. The data center is going to cover a very huge area. Uh, uh, if you see in this picture, you can clearly visualize that how a how big the data center is all about. See that. Uh, so if you see the trucks and near the data center, see how they are looking like a small, small toys. So this is this big how a data center. Actually, it is like a it is a cloud data center. But when you compare to your uh, normal data centers, like normal company data centers, for example, if you are going to take about PCS or else if you're going to take about uh, uh, Wipro or else any small, any company data centers, they are relatively small compared to the cloud data center. But eventually what you are going to find out inside a data center, only the servers and network and security appliances will be available inside a data center. Now, what, how can we select an area for a data center? If I want to install any data center, then how can I select an uh, area for a data center? The first thing, what you need to see is you need to check it out for the power. So uh, if you think uh, in a, a company, which is having a 10 computers in a, if in a room, if there are 10 computers, then definitely we need to have an AC. But if you go for a data center, a very big data center where there are thousands of racks inside the thousands of racks, you can have some millions of, sorry, some thousands of uh, servers. Now, how much amount of AC or else how much amount of coolingness that the particular servers will require? And regarding that, how much amount of power that a data center requires? So we need to have high power availability so that the data center will get uh, power from two substations. Uh, from two substations without any power loss. If at all one power, one substation is down, then we can get the power from the another substation so that continuous power supply will be available for the data center. And as well as it will have around uh, three days of power backup, a data center will have three days of power backup. And that is how we can maintain continue, continuity in the power, uh, power uh, thing. And the next one is the second one. And the most important one is network. Networking, like see, uh, see, uh, data centers are not residing near to or else next to your companies. So data centers will be available only at the uh, far end of the city so that we need to have the network connectivity from our company that uh, the server needs to connect to the data center or else the client needs to connect to the uh, data center where their servers are located. So how they are going to connect, if at all there is no network connectivity, it is impossible to connect to the data center. So definitely we need to have a network connectivity that can be done by your data center. And the next one is, first of all, we need to check out, check out the climatic conditions also. And we, uh, climatic conditions like what are previously within 20 to 30 years, is there any disaster occurred at that particular location? If there are any disasters, then the data center will not be installed at that particular location. 
So if there is no day disasters or occurred or else very free, less frequently than any disasters are occurred, then that is that can be selected as a perfect area for installing the data center. And as well as transport facility. So why we require this transport facility and not only that we need to have, so every five to six years, the equipment will be changing. Obviously we have to change the servers or else obviously we need to go for the, uh, maintenance of the servers, everything will be done. So within five to six years, we need to have all the changes for that. We need to have the transport facility available very near to the data center. Of course, the data centers has to be installed the far end of the city, but still we need to have the connectivity through the all ways of transport. And as well as uh, equipment requirement, as I already said to you that every five years, we need to change the data center or else data center equipment. Then definitely we need to have all these things uh, ready. So why we require all this why we require the data centers what is the necessity of a data center like hope you understand that what are the necessities that we have or else what are the precautions that we have to take whenever we are installing any data center now after installing the data center my data will be transferred between the companies and to the customers now if i have to install this data center which is very very big in scale uh, I need to have very huge amount of investment that I have to do on a particular data center. If I am a small scale industry or else if I am running a small scale firm, then how can I go for this type of data center? Is that uh, feasible for me? For example, there is a company where there are only five to six employees are there. Uh, they, they are trying to work it on a particular application and uh, they have they want to deploy the application on a particular server, which is about a very startup industry. So for a startup industry, is that recommended to have the servers, these many number of servers and this many number of uh, what I can say, how much amount you are going to uh, spend on the servers is not feasible for a startup company. So what is the main thing that we have to overcome without spending the cost, without having this much amount of cost? How can I go for that? Now that comes, there comes a picture of cloud. So this is how your cloud will be introduced uh, for the small scale industry. What is meant by a cloud? A cloud is a service provider or else it is a, it is going to provide the compute service or else it is going to provide the network and security services. And you are going to have your computers just within a blink of your eyes. You can install your servers and you can run your applications uh, without any further efforts without putting any extra efforts or else without purchasing those servers you will just rent a server and you will just install the application on the server and you will run it out for example if i have to show you i don't have any server right now i don't i am just i am i just want to introduce or else i just want to install my own company so i will go to uh so aws.amazon.com from here i will log into my console i will just install a server give my password simply i will go with the configuration of the server i'll just install a server within a while and i will deploy my own application uh, example from server that's what i'm good Now I'll select this and instance. And if you see here where I have connected now, I am in Hyderabad location or else I'm in a remote location, but I am going to connect to the server which is created inside the North Virginia region. So between these, uh, between Hyderabad and North Virginia region, definitely I need to have a connectivity so that I can access my server. Now let me take the server, let me take the remote of this server. to you can come to know about all those things don't worry about that but still now you are able to access your server now if i want 
a website. If I want to have a website right now, I don't have any website running on the server. But if I want instantly, if I want any website, let me do one thing. Uh, how PM update I Y install nginx. Now I am going to install my web services and eventually I am going to get my website. As soon as as soon as the Nginx has been installed on my server, obviously I am going to get my services up and I can run my desired website. So what is it is saying? Not available. Okay, that's fine. Is on, on Linux extras install Nginx. System CTL start nginx. Now my services has been start. Now if I refresh this, if you see here, I got my website instantly. I'm I'm getting my services up and running. So I don't require anything. I don't need to bother about my servers. I don't need to bother about the networking and I don't need to bother about the operating system that has been running, whether it has been installed properly or not. Is there any monitoring that I have to do? I don't need to bother all these things. Just I have installed my server and I just installed my services and I'm running the services on that particular server. So I'm able to work it out instantly. But if I want to change this now, if you see here, I got a website like welcome to Nginx. I will just make it a small change. Uh, nano slash user share Nginx HTML index.html. Welcome. Now I'll go over here. I'll simply say Welcome to Welcome to AWS trainings. Uh, when I refresh this automatically, the website has been updated like this so that what is happening here in the back end, what is happening? So I have just deployed a server and from the server, I deployed a service so that it is instantly accessible by each and every person. Now, if you take this URL and if you search in your mobile phone, also you can access this service. Now, this is how the cloud, the cloud will be helpful for the right now the cloud will be helpful for the uh, candidates who are or else the, for the companies which are cutting companies any budding companies that are coming into the picture this is how the cloud will be helpful now what are the different cloud service providers that we are having so the cloud service providers are aws azure and gcp and like that we are having so many cloud providers like alibaba and then we are having virtual vmware cloud and then oracle cloud that there are so many clouds are available, but as of now, the majority of the cloud market share was taken by these three companies. One is uh, AWS and the other one is Azure and the other one is GCP. Now, if you are going to learn about the cloud, now, whenever you are learning the cloud, what are the uh, steps or else what is the uh, procedure, how you can learn a cloud? The first thing that you need to understand or else first you need to un make sure that you have a knowledge in Linux. So definitely every cloud engineer has to have a knowledge on Linux. Basic Linux, you know, Linux is more than enough to have uh, knowledge or else to get understanding about the cloud infrastructure or else whatever the practicals or else whatever the services that we are accessing. Majority of the services uh, will be taken care by the Linux operating system itself. So you need to have a basic understanding about the Linux and then you need to have any one cloud. So basically you need to have an understanding about uh, any uh, one cloud First of all, you need to start your career by learning any one cloud that is either AWS or else Azure. I'm not saying you to learn about, definitely you have to have an understanding. First, you need to learn AWS and then you need to go for Azure. 
it is not recommended you can have a brief understanding about either you can have a knowledge on aws or also either you can have a knowledge on azure after learning that then you can go with the devops and then uh, you can go with the or uh, then you can you can have shift uh, if you learn here aws after completion of aws you can go with the devops and after completion of devops you can go with the azure so if you learn aws you can go with azure or else if you learn azure then you can go with the aws and after that also it's recommended to have a knowledge on kubernetes and then you can learn uh, if you are further interested to learn about more about the cloud, learn more about the cloud, then you can go with the GCP configurations. And then lastly, now each and every company are requiring the candidate who has the knowledge on infrastructure and as well as the coding. So definitely they are looking further for an engineer who is having knowledge on any sort of coding. I will recommend you to have a look over the Python. So this is this is the agent orders. This is how you are going to learn the cloud from basics to the higher levels. So uh, this is how you are going to complete your sessions and or also this is how you are going to learn all the cloud and so that you can get a prominent job in a company. Now, definitely is that recommended to have a knowledge on Python? It is not uh, recommended to have that, but uh, if you are having a knowledge on, uh, I, I'm not specifying that you, you should have a knowledge on Python to learn the cloud. It is not recommended. But if you are having, if you are interested towards learning the coding and if you want to get a job in a, in a, in a good firm, then definitely you need to have the basic knowledge about coding and as well as you need to have the basic knowledge about infrastructure. So whatever we are learning in the AWS, what are the concepts that we are learning in this class in the next 45 days that is completely regarding your infrastructure only. There is no more coding that will be involved into your AWS. Now, what we are going to learn in the next couple of uh, months or else next uh, 45 days, the first one is, so what will be the curriculum of the next uh, next 45 days? As, you, as I already shared with you in the website and you can have a look over that. But if you want to know about that, I will just share your brief uh, curriculum here. So the first concept that we are going to discuss is VPCs. So in Amazon, first of all, you need to have a basic understanding about the first one is introduction to cloud intro to cloud this is the first thing that you are going to learn after that you are going to learn about vpc virtual private cloud and inside vpc there are some services like uh, what vpc will be providing so the vpc will be providing like uh, somewhere uh, vpc peering nat gateway and uh, security group security concepts and then vpn configuration and then we will be learning about uh, uh, transit gateways these are all the concepts that you are going to learn uh, in vpc and before you go for this my recommendation is that you need to have a basic understanding about the networking also not very in-depth of networking ccna level is not uh, requ required but you need to have a basic understanding about networking among those networking concepts you need to have a knowledge on uh, ip addresses and the next one is uh, cidr range so these are the concepts that you need to have a basic understanding before you go for the VPC configuration. Why? Because VPC will come under the networking services that are provided by the Amazon Web Services. So you need to have the basic understanding about these things. And after that, after VPC, then we will be going with EC2, Elastic Cloud Computing. So in EC2, we will be learning about what is so what are the different types of instances that we are having and how to configure the instances and what are the different uh, images that we are having. Either it might be a Red Hat image or else it might be Ubuntu image or else it might be Amazon Linux image, Windows image. These are all the things that we are going to learn in EC2 instances and as well as we are going to learn about uh, launch templates and then uh, we will be learning about load balancers auto scaling groups these are all the concepts and uh, with that we will be learning about global accelerator route 53 and cloud front these are the some of the services that are provided by the aws itself and after ec2 then we will be going for uh, iam policies so it's just a two, two to three days of classes iam identity and access management where you are going to get know about uh, what are the, who are users, what are the roles that we can specify. And then we will be going with the role-based policies and then we will be going with the uh, role switching. These are all the concepts that you are going to learn in IIM. And then we will be learning about, after IIM, then we will be learning about S3 buckets. As we already know that S3 comes under the storage that is provided by the Amazon itself. So S3 buckets, uh, simple storage services where we can store a huge amount of data 
when you go for the ec2 instances there is a storage called as ebs where you can store up to 16 tb of data but you when you go for the s3 buckets here you can store huge amount of data huge like more than 16 tb you can go with the unlimited storage so that is provided by the s3 and then we will be learning about some of the concepts like uh, rds inside s3 you will be learning about uh, efs so s3 glacier uh, efs fsx these are all the concepts that you are going to learn in s3 and when you go for the rds relational databases uh, so you will be learning about mysql and then uh, no sql concepts will be there uh, under no sql you will be try uh, i will be trying to show you how DynamoDB will be working out. So these are the concepts that you are going to learn. After that, you are going to learn about CloudWatch. And finally, we'll be learning about cloud formation. If possible, uh, then there is a concept called as a data migration. So data migration will be there from on-prem to cloud. This is uh, completely optional. Uh, I'm not going to completely rely on this or else I am not going to completely uh, give a picture about how a data can be migrated from my on-prem to the cloud. But if in, if in case, if it is possible, then definitely I will go with the data migration also. Uh, these are the concepts that you are going to learn in the AWS. Hope you have a clear picture of what you are going to learn and uh, how you are going to work it out. So is there any queries regarding this? If you have any uh, doubts, you can ask me right now. Or else uh, we will go further. Yes, Pradeep, uh, we will have the practical hands on. Uh, like, uh, see, uh, whatever the concepts that we are telling that we are that you are going to learn that will be completely practical related. I am not going to share any theory part. So, in AWS, whatever we are doing, it's completely uh, practical itself. Sorry, uh, we don't have any class for the developers or for the project related uh, things. It is completely basic concepts that we are going to discuss how, how an infrastructure can be maintained. Will we cover Linux? Uh, see, uh, Linux is completely, it's uh, uh, basic. Will you give the basic idea? See, if I have to go for the Linux, then it is again going to take another 15 days to complete the Linux. So the basics of the Linux, it will going to take another 15 minutes, sorry, 15 days. So, yep. So if I have to say you, and if there are any Telugu people, uh, there is a, there is a, uh, just let me show you my channel over here. Is it? Yeah. You go here this is my cgit trainings channel where you can have a uh, linux content in telugu you can look it uh, look after that it will be helpful for you i hope that but it is completely in telugu telugu and some sort of english will be there so if you are having any doubts regarding that you can you you, you can have a look over that so that is what i can recommend but uh, basics of linux in the sense whenever we are covering the aws parts yes we can provide that but compared to the next one uh, it's uh, pretty difficult to have the cl classes uh, classes going on with the same Linux concepts. If I have to say, if I have to cover the Linux and then I have to come to the AWS, then it is again going to take another 15 days of button. If it is okay, then we can go further. Still any questions, any queries? Solution architects. Uh, if, if you are a solution architect, then uh, I don't recommend you, but yep. If you are, if you want to check it out through practicals, how we are going to learn the or AWS through practicals, then yes, you can have a look over that. I'm not recommending you to this. And the next question you are asking is, uh, uh, is course, uh, do you provide material for AWS exam, exam questions, any material for AWS exam questions? Hmm. So, uh, AWS exam questions, you can go on through, go through the uh, AWS website where you can find out the exam questions. I will show you at the end of the session. You don't need to worry about that. AWS Lambda, yes, you are going to learn about AWS Lambda, but the, I'm not saying that this is completely cloud administration. Yes, it is completely the cloud administration, what you are going to learn. It is completely regarding how servers are deployed and how servers are maintained, how servers can, how can we manage the services. Uh, like how to install, uh, how to install, or else how to create a particular web page, or else how to create a web application, and uh, what are the different uh, services that are provided by the AWS to run a particular uh, IT from. So yes, it is completely cloud administration. It will comes under complete cloud administration. 
uh, how this course will be helpful for Oracle DBA. This course, Oracle DBA, it is not for this uh, database administration. We are not going to provide, like see, uh, this is all comes under uh, AWS Glue, Apache, Airflow covered here, no. I can simply say that I, I, I cannot, whatever the covering topics I have, I have already mentioned about that. I didn't specify about AWS Clue and Apache. So yes, it is not there. Will you cover shell mm -hmm. scripting in this course? No. Uh, will you cover shell scripting? The shell scripting will come under the Linux and as well as when, when at the time of DevOps learning, you can have, I can cover the shell scripting. Right now it is comp it is purely AWS. So we are concentrating more on AWS only. Python developers. See, uh, Python developers, if you want to have an idea towards the infrastructure related thing. Now, if you are tell if you are deploying any applications in any servers, how the servers will be functioning, what are the phases of deployment and uh, what are the different or uh, different uh, problems that an infrastructure will be provided. Yes, it will be helpful for the Python developers also if you are uh, if you are really interested towards learning about the operations team. So if at all, if you are a developer, you need to know how an operations team will be working. Yes, it might be helpful for you. What are the AWS certification possibly I can plan? You can plan AWS associate level certifications. Associate, uh, let me show you one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you are completing this course, uh, you can plan for this uh, certification, like you can go with the uh, excuse me, just give me a second. You can go with the uh, cloud uh, solution architect associate level. You can write the exam or else you can plan for the certification regarding this. You can go with this. Uh, or else if at all, if you are having any knowledge about uh, prior knowledge about Python or else any coding, then you can go with the developer and then you can go with the sysops administrator. These are the three levels of associate, three associate levels so you can plan for. See, uh, Zango is not covered in, sorry. Zango and AWS, which is the best suitable for Python. Why you are asking the Python questions in AWS class? This is completely AWS. We are not uh, Zango and Python. This is Zango is a framework that is available in Python, not in AWS. So please, uh, if you are having any questions regarding the Python or else it is not completely for developers. So if you are having any questions related to, I already said you that Glue will not be provided. Yes. Could you please share the complete topics you are uh, going to cover and how many hours I have already provided uh, Kavan, I already cover I already provided the same in the website. You can go through the website. I have given the complete curriculum and as well as I have specified the topic also. So I don't want to waste the time on the all the things. You can go with the or you can go to the website where you can find the uh, topics if I if you want the website. Uh, so I will just show you that. Uh, so, uh, if you go to this website uh, here, you can have the curriculum where you have registered. So, yep. You can have the clear cut curriculum, how many days it is going to take and what are the different topics that we are going to cover in this and all the things will be available right over here. So. Uh, so this is a, this is not the questions that you need to ask at this point of time. Uh, will I get a job after this course? I don't recommend you to have the job only with the AWS. Then definitely you need to have the knowledge on both AWS and DevOps. So majority of the companies are looking for the engineers, but to learn DevOps, definitely you need to have the basic understanding about the AWS. So you need to have both so AWS and DevOps. So we do, by combination of these two courses, yes, definitely you will get a job. And I don't have the basic knowledge on Linux. I think you will provide right. See again, I am repeating. Uh, so if you have, if you don't have the Linux knowledge, uh, okay, that's fine. But the basics concepts you cannot be covered. Why? Because uh, again, I am saying you it's a time constraint. I have to complete the course within, if at all, if I have to co complete the course within forty-five to sixty days, then definitely you need to have the 
basic knowledge about Linux. If you don't have, you can go through the uh, go through my channel. You can have that. You can have the basic concepts only. You don't require much amount of uh, much much knowledge about the Linux, like administration level, like a pro. You don't require that. Uh, so let me do one thing. I will ping you uh, at the right of the, my class. Anyways, still CGIT trainings. You can search it out. Well, so, so this is what my channel. You can go through that. You are having. You will be having the basic uh, concepts about the Linux, not the uh, in depth about that in the channel. Uh, yes, it's a regular class, and yeah, when I go for this, uh, just let me complete this. So our class, our class timings will be uh, six, seven to eight and seven to eight a.m. every day from Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday, the classes will be there, and weekends will be off. Weekends, you don't have that. So that's about your. Uh, Which certificates can I write with this course? AWS, I already specified that. I don't want to repeat it. Without dumps, yes, you can find it. The find the dumps in the websites of AWS. You don't need to worry about that. Dumps are not required for the writing the exam, any exam. But anyways, uh, if you want the dumps, then you can have it. So you don't need to worry about all those things. No dumps will be provided. And uh, this is my, you can go through that. Uh, if you want to learn about Linux, yes. Any other questions regarding, uh, don't go for the Python programming and all the things. We are not going to discuss about the Python programming. I am clearly, again, I am saying you that we are completely into the infrastructure as a service. After that, we are not going to discuss anything regarding the programming itself. Gautam, I already said you that you can go and write the AWS associate level of examinations. Uh, so I have specified the path also. So can I pass that completely depends upon your hand. I cannot say that you, you will 100% uh, you will you will have the pass percentage as 100%. Why? Because it's completely on your practical knowledge and on your theoretical knowledge, what you are going to learn. So that's that's what I can say. You said path, it is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I will... Mm -hmm. Which certificate? Can associate I, level certificate i already said you associate solution, level, there is this solution i i have given you the clear picture you are having the three three levels of certifications one is the aws solution architect associate developer and CISO administrator among those three certification you can pass aws solution architect associate level okay with this course I yes can pass solutions architect yes okay any queries regarding other things? I hope that everything is clear right now. If you don't mind, please take my screen and uh, look at it. Actually, I'm searching for uh, cloud core. In please, it's, uh, it's not a one-to-one -one session. I can uh, I can I can have the session at the time of at, at the end of the session. I will definitely let you know about that. But as of now, we have to discuss about. I have to go for the another queries. So hope uh, everything is clear. Is there any doubts regarding that? Now, what I'm telling you is. Uh, I already attended uh, some other institutions demo class. They shared some course content that is very huge. They are, they are telling the 26 tools in two months. So if you do, uh, I am looking for your advice. Actually, I have uh, uh, a great belief in Durga Sar and his institution. So uh, I am asking your your uh, uh, view on that course. I can take that course or this course. We will we will talk it in a one to one session. If you don't mind, uh, we will discuss about that. Please. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. When will you talk? Uh, I will ping you within uh, like after the completion of the class. Definitely, I will ping you. On that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh guys, uh, will you provide the recorded session right uh, right like uh, every class? Yes. Uh, recorded videos will be available for you at any uh, at all the sessions of the recorded videos will be available for you. Don't worry about that. And this course has offline or online. Actually, uh, right now we are connected through online, so that I can say this course will be online. And if you at all, if you if you want anything, you can you can uh, come to the Durga Soft, which is located in Hyderabad. That's what if you want the offline. But as of now, this is completely online itself. Yes.
Okay, fine. Uh, so that's about your queries. Hope you understand the queries. Is there uh, further further delays or else further things we will discuss in the later on sessions when we are going further into the classes. And as of now, I can clearly say that uh, no programming or else no coding will be involved in the AWS training. It's purely infrastructure related training that you are going to get and what are the different services that are provided by the Amazon Web Services and how we are going to uh, work on the Amazon services, what are the basic concepts that we are going to cover, everything will be there. That is completely regarding your infrastructure only. Uh, you don't have anything regarding the programming. So no programming languages are required. No Python language, no, no coding is required to learn the AWS, but a little bit of uh, JSON is required where we are going to cover in the cloud formation that I can make you understand uh, at the time of IAM policies and all the things I will try to make you make sure that you are able to understand all these things. Hope you understand this and still. Uh, so that's about uh, that's about what you are going to learn in the next couple of uh, months and uh, this is these are the topics that we are going to cover and uh, tomorrow we'll be starting the new class. Uh, so tomorrow we will be starting about uh, what is meant by IAS, what is I, what is meant by PAS, and what is SAS, and what are the different types of clouds, and how we are going to create an AWS account, and then we will be covering all these uh, small small things after the completion of the class. Uh, then uh, the first three demos are the free demos; you don't need to worry about that. And afterwards, from Monday onwards, whatever the classes are the, going to commence, that classes will be completely whoever the, the students that are registered into the course, they will be having the uh, complete sessions for that and uh, finally that is what i want to make it out and uh, the course content has mentioned on the Soft portal everything will be covered yes of course whatever the content that has been mentioned on the Soft uh, portal will be covered is the same link do we need to use to join yes of course you need to join so the same link you need to have okay so Whatever we, have, whatever the course content that is provided on the Dugasoft portal, as I already showed you the website and what are the contents that we are going to cover, you can have, you can go through this so that uh, whatever the topics that I have specified over there will be covered in the next couple of months. You don't need to worry about all those things. Okay. Uh, can I get any course completion certificate after this? That can be said by the Dugasoft management team. You can contact the management team at the time of payment. They can give you the clear clear cut picture about that. You don't need to worry about the close complete certifications. Yes, all the things you will get, don't worry. So hope you understand the session. Uh, finally, uh, what I want to say is welcome to Dugasoft. And uh, yes, from tomorrow onwards, we are going to dive into the new concepts, what you are going to learn, new concepts are also new world of the cloud you are going to learn. And then uh, we will be, uh, you will be understanding a few more concepts regarding the cloud infrastructure only. What what is meant by VPC? What is meant by EC2? What is meant by EBS? What is meant by S3? What is meant by CloudWatch, RDS, DynamoDB, S3 buckets, IAM policies? These are these are all the concepts that you are going to learn. Am I clear on that? Is there any queries regarding uh, regarding anything uh, like Python coding or else anything you want to ask? You can ask me right now. And if there is no uh, queries, then uh, yes. We'll stop right here and tomorrow we'll be joining and the sessions the sessions will be of one hour. Sometimes it might be prolonged to one and a half hour also, depending upon the course content or else depending upon the content or else depending upon the topic that we are going to learn. Sometime it might be prolonged a much bit later. Yes, you can get the recording of this class also. I hope that uh, we will provide this uh, demos also, uh, demos also. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Uh, so hope you guys uh, hope you understand what you are going to learn in the next couple of months. And uh, that's all from my end. So have a nice day and uh, bye. Take take my screen. Oh, uh, okay. Just give me a second. Uh, Gautam, right? Yes, yes. Uh, just give me a second. Can you ping me on this? Yeah. Just give me a second. You can ping me on that. So that I will support you on this. After all, this uh, class has been completed. I will okay. just show you. Your okay. mobile number, right? Uh, it
it's not mine but yes you can ping it on that okay don't worry uh, i will give you an instant reply on that so yes okay. that's all for for today have a nice day guys and uh, gautam you can ping me on that i will, I will uh, discuss about this that. number has whatsapp okay yes okay thank you so much Thank you guys we will see in the uh, next class bye so so how who are who are eligible for this uh, for the learning of this course and uh, what else uh, then we have discussed about how you have to learn the course what are the different uh, stages that you have to learn the cloud so first of all you have to complete linux and then you have to go for aws and then you have to go for devops and then you have to go for kubernetes this is what we discussed what is the path of learning cloud and then we discussed about uh, what else uh, and just uh, just i uh, have given us some clarification regarding your uh, cloud and all other things so what are the what, what are the scenarios that we have to take and i have given you the, some curriculum regarding your cloud and now today we will be discussing about uh, so uh, as we have already discussed about the cloud what is meant by cloud and all the things just i just want to repeat the what is cloud and then uh, i will just go enter into what is data center and then we will go with the uh servers physical servers how physical servers will be looking like and what are the different physical servers rack servers and then uh, how a networking will be configured and before entering into the uh aws uh, just we will go through some of the basics of our networking concepts and then we will be going into the uh linux uh, linux operating system so basics of linux operating systems can be teach or uh, can be said here and then uh, we will be entering into uh, aws so i as i already said you that uh, linux linux is very very important for your aws so we will be learning in linux basics of linux what are the required uh, commands that we need to understand those will be said in this uh, in this topic not the entire linux so system administration level of linux cannot be taught here so what are the basic commands how we have to uh, access some of the commands and uh, Uh, what are the required commands that we need to understand in the uh, understand to have a knowledge on aws that we will be learning in this class not only in this class in the next class also we are going to understand about the networking concepts and the linux itself so uh, uh, i need to say you about what is meant by cloud here yeah. a cloud uh, everybody will think that cloud is a storage but uh, as per my as as i am saying you that the cloud can provide you different services remotely so uh, a cloud is an infrastructure provider which can have uh, which can provide you different types of infrastructure services like uh, servers and where you can install databases and uh, applications in that servers so again i am repeating that a cloud is an infrastructure provider which will which will provide the servers and networking concepts and inside that servers you can install the databases and uh, uh, application applications whatever the, your requirement are there so this is about the cloud so uh, is cloud do uh, is cloud is physically present or else whether it's an imaginary thing so if at all if i have to say you so cloud is a physical data center so what is this physical data center as we already discussed in the last class what is meant by a data center a data center is a place where you will have a large number of servers are assembled so what is what is this what is meant by a large number of servers assembled so a data center is a place where large number of servers are assembled so how servers will be assembled inside a data center so if you see uh, as i already said you in the last class i have given you the scenario that uh, a data center is a very large place where you can have multiple number of uh, rack servers rack servers or also blade servers will be there so how these rack servers will be looking like i, I already given you an example mm. if i go back here so 
you see here, this is how your data center will be looking like large, a huge amount of uh, servers will be assembled. These are, this is how your rack servers will be there. And these racks will have an uh, server. So these racks will consisting of uh, physical servers and as well as these racks will have the uh, networking related devices like uh, Cisco routers or Juniper routers. And uh, on this, in this racks, we can configure the firewalls like uh, Barracuda firewall or also whatever the uh, another type of 14 at firewalls, all these uh, devices will be connected over here. Now, how a physical server will be looking like? So just give it for an example, if you go for HP Gen 10 server. So this is how a physical rack server will be looking like. Uh, yeah. So this is the rear view of your server where you will have all the hard disks are assembled. And this is, if I have to show you, I will show you this, uh, this is the best example. Over there. You take this. Now, this is how your physical server will be looking like. Uh, this is the HP Gen 10 server where this is the front end. Uh, so if you can see this, uh, here you can see the green lights are blinking. All these green lights are indicating to your hard disk. And this is the rear view of your server where uh, these are all the hard disk, uh, what I can say a hard disk base where you can install all the hard disk. And these are all about your LAN ports uh, where you can connect your uh, networking cables. And this is about your power supply. And this is the uh, serial port and this is your power supply uh, channel. So this is these are the fans. These are the fans which will be cooling your uh, server and uh, these are your, uh, this is the VGA cable which can be connected to your monitor. So this is how your servers will be looking like and these servers are clamped to your racks. So as I already said you that in data center you will have the racks. So if I have to show you server uh, uh, racks. So hmm. this is how your server racks will be looking like inside a data center. So yeah, this is how your so uh, this is how your servers uh, or else this is how your racks will be available inside the data center where all the uh, uh, servers are clamped into your uh, racks. So just like your wardrobes, how your wardrobes are looking like in the same manner, your racks will be looking like this. So on, in this server, we will be implementing some of the uh, virtualization concepts. There is a concept called as virtualization inside that virtual machines, we are going to deploy the operating system and inside that operating system, we are going to deploy our application. So if I have to say you, uh, I will, I will show you a small diagram. So there is a very big area. This is the area where, this, suppose if you think this is my data center, inside my data center, there will be racks. This is about your server rack. This is how your server rack will be. Inside the server rack, you will be having multiple physical servers. So if you suppose, if you think this is the physical server and uh, not only a single server, a rack can consisting about to 25 to, sorry, 20 to 25 physical servers in a single rack. And uh, there are, there will be some thousands of racks that are available inside a data center. So this is how your server servers will be there. And inside these servers, you will have virtual missions you can you can come to know about these virtual missions you don't you don't worry about that so this is a virtual mission inside and again you will have multiple virtual missions like this you will have the virtual missions and uh, inside the virtual missions we are going to implement the applications and inside, uh, sorry, we are going to implement whatever the applications that we require. So this is how your uh, uh, server rack will be having and inside, and there will be multiple server racks that are available inside a data center. So this is how your data center will be looking like. So 
now each and every rack will be interconnected in each and every rack will be interconnected through networking so we are going to lay a networking a networking between all the racks or else network cable between all the racks so that each rack will be having the communication or else each uh, each and every server will have the communication with the another server so two servers will be getting communicated with each other and here you need to understand one concept called as 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 i am discussing here you need to understand what is meant by network so and then uh, you, what is meant by networking and all the things and here you need to very most importantly you need to understand ip address what is meant by ip address these are the few terms that you need to have a brief understanding now when i get back to the uh, data center as you have understand this uh, this is what the data center is the collaboration of multiple physical servers in a single place is called as a data center and uh, a cloud is like a very big data center where we can have a collaborative of multiple servers and networking devices and uh, security devices and this cloud will provide you the services this cloud will provide the user required services whether the user want any storage yes it can be provided through cloud or else user want any servers it can be provided by your cloud and whatever what not a, a cloud is going to provide each and everything that a user requires now uh, we will be uh, we will be knowing about what is meant by network and what is meant by address in a meanwhile but uh, so here i need to complete or else here you need to understand uh, a few more concepts like what are the different service models that a cloud can provide see uh, now i am saying that a cloud is going to provide you the uh, servers networking and uh, or else networking uh, networking related things and applications and uh, databases and all the things how it is going to provide that so here we are having some cloud service models Uh, I will I will call them as IAS or simply I can write IAA uh, capital S, which means infrastructure as a service, or uh, it can be written in the form of IAS in the upper case also you can write like this. So here you need to understand what is meant by I A uh, yes. So infrastructure as a service. Infra as a service so let us go for a brief example if i have to say you uh, an example for this now uh, you have constructed or else uh, you have given a contract to a contractor that to build a very very home so very new home so he has constructed a new home for you and he has hand over hand over a home to you so whenever he is doing that he can check he can cross check that what are the required uh, required things for the home like uh, whether we have uh, created or constructed a wall clearly or else is there anything that we have to do with the uh with all the with all the home requirement home related things he can do that but if you ask the con if you ask the contractor so when, at the time of uh, joining into your or else uh, housewarming uh, thing uh if you if you ask the contractor that hey contractor uh okay you have constructed a very good house but uh what about the appliances there are no ac there, there is no ac there is no refrigerator there is no tv inside my home if you ask like that what contractor will say obviously he's going to say that hey mate uh that is not my work to do so you my work is to construct a home for you i have constructed a, a, a beautiful home for you but the application related things like uh whatever you want you want a refrigerator that's your thing to purchase it or else if you want a tv that's your thing to purchase that is not my thing so my 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 work is to construct a, a home for you i have done my work and re re remaining like uh, applications and all the things that's your responsibility so in the same manner as like the same scenario in ias also infrastructure as a service also uh so the service provider whoever are the cloud service providers are there either it might be aws or else it might be azure any service provider so in the infrastructure as a service they are going to provide you the infrastructure so what is meant by infrastructure so here the infrastructure is nothing but they are going to provide you the servers network and uh, somewhere like data uh, sorry so network and security 
so security so these are the things that they will be providing and uh, inside the servers if you want to launch sql application or else if you want to launch python application mysql application postgres application that's completely depending upon the user requirement that doesn't bother that doesn't have any thing to do with the infrastructure as a service so if you go and ask the service provider hey mate i have taken idols uh, i have created a server uh, inside your cloud but uh, you are not providing uh, sql inside that server so the, obviously aws or any service provider is going to say you that uh, thank you for contacting but that's not my responsibility to provide the application also it's your responsibility as you have chosen ias so it's not my responsibility to uh, to give the applications for you it's completely your responsibility if you want to install nginx or else if you want to run python or else if you want to run mysql that's completely related to you so whatever you want to do you can do that but uh, this is the silly question which you are asking because you have opted for infrastructure as a service uh, so what I can do now, if at all, if I want the uh, applications should be installed inside the server. So if I have to show you an example for this, let me go back here. Uh, I will be logging into my AWS account. So here, if you can see, uh, we are having, uh, uh, I think I am having a server over here. Hmm. So let me log into the server. Am I able to log into that? Just one second. <clears throat> once we complete this uh once we complete once we complete the basic things then i will show you what are the lab requirements what are the software that you want to have to understand uh, uh, aws uh so what are the different softwares like putty Actually, that is called as Putty, but uh, as per our in English Indian, uh, sorry, Indian English, then uh, uh, that name has been termed as Putty. So I will let you explain, I will, I will tell you how to install Putty in your uh, computer. And uh, these are the some softwares that we require, Putty only, we require not much more than that. And uh, you need to have uh, and one more editor called as Visual Studio Code that is very helpful for you. That is, that is a handy application for you to edit some of the code. So Sir, yesterday you said there is there will be no coding, but you now you are saying that there is some code. But here we will be having JSON scripting, uh, where you are going to write some a little bit of code for your uh, IAM policies to to understand that we require some uh, some uh, some application called as Visual Studio Code. We will uh, I will I will make you understand about that. Don't worry. So these are the applications that we require to understand cloud. Rather than that, we don't require anything else. By default, you will have you will be having Chrome or else Edge. Anything is okay for you. And uh, tomorrow, I will be saying about how to create an AWS account so that you can create an AWS account and all the things. So don't worry about that. So let me uh, log into the server. Sorry. So I don't know that I got. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you see here, now when I give the IP address of this server in my URL or I'll say in my address box, if I give like this. Now, what I'm going to get, I'm going to get the server, whatever the service that you want to reach, you are unable to reach to that particular service. 
So the site cannot be reached. Why? Because I don't have any uh, website that is installed in my server. So now what I'm going to do here is, let me show you. So as I already said to you, they will provide or else the service providers will provide me the infrastructure only, which means that they will provide the servers, they will provide the networking and they will provide the security only. They are not going to provide any application related things. So if you want to go for that, then it's our responsibility to have an installing. So if I want to convert this as a web server, just I will go for, let me do one thing, apt install nginx y. Mm -hmm. Now, when I do that, so automatically my server will be converted as a web server. So I can I can uh, I can provide the web services from this server. Let us have a look into that. Hmm. Now, when I refresh this, see that I got a website like Welcome to Nginx, which means that I have deployed an application called as Nginx, so that. My server has become a web server. Now, if I want to install SQL, it is my responsibility to install the application. So uh, this is what I can say you, I can simply say you about uh, IAS. So IAS means infrastructure as a service where they are going to provide only the infrastructure and remaining concepts are all regarding our, our thing. So an engineer has to work it on whether I have to, I have to convert the server into an web server or else an application server or else any database server that's completely depends upon the user thing. Now, the second one is, I hope that you understand about IIS and the second one is PAS. So what is meant by PAS? PAS means platform as a service. Platform as a service. So here you are going to request for the platform. So if you want to have a database like MySQL or Postgres SQL, you are just going to uh, going for the console like RDS console, and you are going to select whatever the database that you want to install in your uh, in your console. You will just uh, go to that particular service and you will install that particular service. So the best example which I can show you here is, uh, let me go back here. So yeah, if I open this, so RDS, yes, if you, uh, here I am, I'm just going to select which type of operating system or else which type of database I require. I will uh, select create database and it is going to show me a uh, wide variety of databases, which I want to install in my uh, cloud so it is going to ask me whether you want to install Amazon, Aurora, MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, SQL, Oracle, and SQL Server. So see, some of the candidates in your company might know about MySQL and some might be knowing about Postgres SQL. One client will ask that, I want to deploy my uh, server or else I want to deploy my database in, inside an Oracle database or else I want to take a database like Postgres database that completely depends upon the user requirement. So if you want MySQL, you can select MySQL and you can deploy that particular database. Now here, what you are doing, you are selecting the platform, you are selecting the application, just you want the MySQL database, yes, you are selecting, but you are not working on servers. So here, if you see in the in this phase, you are working on the servers, you are creating a server and uh, inside that server, you are installing the application. But here, if you see that, you are not going to create any server, you are just going to select the database and that inside the, uh, and you need to understand that we are not going to select any server where this database will be installed. By default, least cloud service provider will have an uh, will have a thinking that this uh, this database should be installed in a particular server. Either it might be a Linux server or also Windows server. We are not going to select the platform, which means we are not going to select any operating system. Which operating system this database has to be installed? We are just selecting the database. So this is like a service apartment. Uh, I think you know what is meant by a service apartment. Can anybody, what is meant by, uh, can anybody tell me what is meant by service apartment? Yes. So basically, basically service apartment is uh, something like uh, everything will be provided, including food, stay, accommodation, this kind of thing. Uh, so we should go and stay similar to that when we choose the platform here. So yes. everything will be provided. We just Go on very nice, very nicely said. Uh, there is a small correction here. A service apartment, uh, they are not going to provide any sort of food. 
but they are going to provide the entire uh, equipment or as a entire application that we require so they are going to provide us the infrastructure like a home and all the things and they are going to provide us what are the applications that the user requires and they will clearly mention that and whenever they are handovering the apartment to the user they will clearly mention that these are the applications so uh, if you go inside the service apartment and there will be definitely there will be some television there will be fridge and a refrigerator and there will be washing machine and uh, if you go inside and ask the whoever or the contractor or else whoever or the mediator if you ask him uh, so uh, you are having a, a television called a television like mi television is there but i want sony sony television so then obviously the contractor is going to say you that mate uh, sorry for that as you already checked into that so whenever you are looking for any service pro apartment you will be going inside a website and you are going to check out all the applications what are available inside that particular apartment so you have checked that completely right then i why again asking you for the different equipment what you are use what you what you have seen so you you have seen that we are going to provide you the this particular television and this particular brand of uh, uh, ac and this particular brand of uh, refrigerator you have seen and you have accepted all the terms now you when you come here you are asking for the different terms we are not going to provide you so whatever the services that we are providing whatever the company or else whatever the brand that we are providing you have to accept it so in the same manner if you go back here here you are going to select the uh, here you are going to select my databases and you will select my sql again whenever you at the time of installation i don't want on windows i want on linux so first of all the user don't know on which platform this particular sql is going to be installed either it might be windows platform or else it might be linux platform but still the user cannot ask for the platform so that is what i want to say you about the pass where you will have just they are going to provide you the software or else they are going to they are simply going to provide you the platform as a service and the next one is sas s a s so this is called as software as a service software as a service now what is this software as a service this is like completely you are going to stay in a hotel where they are going to so the best example is the hotels uh, the, when you go and stay in a hotel they are not going to you are not going to pay for constructing or also you are not going to have a, a lifetime thing so, so you will just go to a particular date and you will check out check in into a particular date and you will check out at a particular date in the same manner and you are going to use all the equipment that has uh, or also all the amenities that has been provided by the uh, hotel either it might be uh, that is rooms and what are the application and as well as they are going to provide free breakfast free lunch everything they are going to see into that so you don't need to worry about all those things so the only thing is you need to purchase or else you need to pay for what you are staying so in the same manner here sas means software as a service where you are going to purchase the software and you are using that software for whatever the time that you have purchased the best example i can say is office 365 office uh, 365 so this is the best example of uh, software as a service where you are going to purchase a uh, software and you will be using that software and the another example is also i can say it as salesforce salesforce is also comes under the software as a service so where you are going to purchase it and you are going to use it and uh, uh, so if you when at the time of using these softwares office 365 and all the things if you are at the time of using that uh, if you write a uh, feedback letter for or else if you write a if you write that uh, thank you for providing the software but uh, i want a little bit of changes so now obviously the microsoft or also office 365 team is going to reply you like this so whatever the software that we have provided use it we are not going to add anything else but thank you for your feedback and uh, we will be updating that in the next update so this is what the uh, reply that they will be providing so you have to use what they have given that's it and you don't have a chance to uh, modify that so simply if i have to show you let me show you a best example i am having uh, just give me a second i will show you one thing mm -hmm. does it yeah if i go here this particular diagram will brief you about 
what is on site what is iis what is pass and what is sas if you see here on uh, so what is blue here the blue represent you manage whatever the user manages and the orange or else red represents that service provider managers who are the service provider say that it might be cloud service provider what they are going to manage so if you see here on site so networking storage servers virtualization everything uh, operating system middleware runtime data and application everything will be managed by the customer only or else client or else the user or else the it service guy only will do that so it service guy will do all these things but when you go back to the cloud that is ias infrastructure as a service here the service provider or else the service vendors who are providing you the services like uh, it might be aws azure gcp oracle oracle cloud either whatever the service provider so if at all if you are opting for an ias service then they are going to provide networking storage servers and virtualization so these servers will be physical servers that completely depends upon the uh, service provider only whether they are they can use hp servers they can use dell servers they can use so you cannot specify that i want these uh, company servers so you have to accept whatever the physical servers and inside that physical servers what are the virtual machines that they are giving we have to accept it but at the time of installing our operating system we can select the operating system so either you want the ubuntu mission or else you want the red hat mission or else you want only windows mission you can select the operating system and on that we can install the applications and then we can have an access towards our user data so this is about my ias when you come back to pas in pas you don't have access up to runtime you don't have to select the operating system only what you can do is whatever the data whatever the user data that you are getting you can have an access towards that and if if you want to change the application application related thing inside the application whatever you want to do you can change it out in the past now when coming to the sas as i already declared you that sas is a type of infrastructure as a service where you you, you cannot do anything everything can be done by the service provider itself the software you cannot change the software or else you cannot do anything so just you need to purchase the software and utilize the software that after that you can uh, you can simply uninstall the software that's completely depends upon the user requirement so hope you understand this if you have any doubts you can comment out me in the chat box uh, waiting for your replies any doubt guys uh, just i got everything will be provided by them yes obviously everything will be provided by them yes uh, any doubts you can uh, you can type in the chat box i'm waiting for your reply guys uh which one will be beneficial for the customers uh, a very nice question but uh, that depends uh, more detail about runtime okay we will discuss that whenever we are into the cloud don't worry about the runtimes we will have a brief understanding about what is meant by runtime that that that's simply an application so either uh, what is the software that you are running in the back end so either it might be python or else it might be java so those are all comes under the runtime you don't need to worry about that anyways coming back to this which one will be beneficial for the customer so that depends upon the user requirement so the user wants directly they want to have an uh, server and they don't want to uh, take more stress about the servers they want only the application related things then they can directly go into the pass as i already show you in the console they can directly uh, install their rds uh, in the specified server so that's completely user requirement uh, i cannot specify that this is what the user requires so or else i cannot say that so the user required so i'm going to or else the service provider is going to provide that so that depends completely on uh, uh, user thing so yes hope you understand uh funny is there any doubts any example which are kind uh, any example which are kind of difficulty to classify uh ravi i cannot understand what you are saying can you like uh, you can unmute and ask the question i am unable to uh, un unable to understand that yeah, yeah sure so yeah some of the things like you know uh uh sometimes it will be difficult to uh classify right that may come under sas sometimes sometimes that may kind of i mean classify under a platform as service so mm -hmm. any such kind of examples of where like you know people used to ask like this is as a uh, pass how 
see uh, uh, kind of thing first first i want to first i want to make something clear the clarification i want to say you about this clear i want to give a clarification okay. this is uh, uh, in the interview perspective uh, i am just saying that uh, this is not the question that they are going to ask you in the interview point of view but uh, uh, if i have to say you what what will comes under what if at all if they are giving that so simply you need to understand that who are going to deploy the server whether the user is deploying the server if at all if i am deploying the server here if you see here who has deployed the server this instance I, the user has deployed the instance so this will comes under the ias infrastructure as a service now here whenever i am just selecting the application now who is going to deploy the server now the service vendor is going to deploy the server then that will be coming under the pass so this make the changes this will comes under so as i already said you this uh so these are the things that are provided by the service providers if you if anybody asking you just think that what they are going to provide whether they are going to provide me uh up to the servers or else whether they are going to provide me up to the run time so depending upon that you can classify that this will comes under ias and this will comes under the sas and or pas uh are you uh, did you understand that yeah yeah i understood for example uh, we have like uh, uh we have a uh, uh, email service right so okay. so can we classify it like pass no, we, or sap obviously which type of email service that you are accessing whether you are accessing office 365 so if you think if you think yeah. that office 365 that you are using you can simply say that it is comes under sas why because uh, you can add all the emails to your uh, application and you uh, and if you want to modify anything you cannot do that on office 365 right you can just uh, have that application and you can run that application that's the only thing that you can do or else in office 365 you can you will be having active directory like uh, you know, mail services exchange box or mail box and all the things but what you can do you can have the bunch of you can purchase uh, so you can purchase a subscription up to 25 emails or else 50 emails and you can only add up to 50 emails only you cannot do anything else i am uh, so so hope you understand this so yeah, are, yeah, you, are you able to do anything else regarding that so you are not going to do anything you are going to only have a purchase or else you will be having only the subscription up to a certain emails and you are going to work it on that that's it so that will purely comes under sas okay 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 fine, fine. Okay. uh yes that's all about your ias and pass and sas then we will be discussing about what are the different types of clouds that we are having and if you understand this public cloud chaitanya before yep. doing this in the in the one of the things that you mentioned right in the cloud i selected some sql mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can you show me the screen Okay, I think good. that is where we are all confusing about the SaaS and PaaS. Uh -huh. So here you, you you selected MS MySQL. You, you, this is one example. Mm -hmm. You opted for you opted for PaaS, right? Platform as a service. Platform as a service, exactly. Can't we say this M MySQL is an application? Of course, it's a it's an application only. But in But... PaaS, the in the diagram in PaaS. Mm -hmm. uh, in the in the diagram you mentioned right mm -hmm. uh, application won't be provided with the pass yes it's in blue yeah yeah uh, but in the I mean, where you i understand that uh, one thing i want to show you is the here is that you are going to select about the application right yeah now when you select this application in my sql whatever the data that you are entering who who will be entering the data whether uh, automatically the service provider will give the data or else the user has to provide the data for the database my actually my sql is a data my sql is a database right yeah yeah so it's inside a, yeah in, it's like a dbm is right yeah yeah it's a, it's a database management server okay yeah so who has to provide the data obviously the user has to user. provide the data okay yeah, yeah. now yeah. if you see here what i am saying the data will be provided by the manager also who will be providing that user will be providing the data okay uh, uh. now if i select this application my my sql application inside this my sql application i am going to provide my data whatever the user given so if i have a login page and the login oh. page is connected to my sql now the user is going to give the data right so uh. that data can be accessed by the 
uh, IT service guy, whoever has deployed this MySQL, I can uh, I can access that. So you will understand this whenever we go for the MySQL services also. Don't worry about that. But as of now, who will be accessing that? If you want to modify any data also, you can do the modification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when we come back to the SaaS software as a service, here you cannot see what the user data. So user, whatever the user data has given, you cannot see that. You can just give the username and password that's it you, you, you cannot modify anything you, you cannot enter into the application and you cannot modify that but in mysql yes you can enter into this mysql with the help of sql workbench client and you can modify the data whatever we have given that so okay. we can enter into this okay yeah, yeah. still yeah. it is confusing yeah yeah it looks like understanding and in the in the other side it's like confusing uh -huh. because only that word application is confusing so yeah, yeah. i understand that yeah, uh, yeah. don't worry about this uh, we will discuss about uh, in depth whenever we go for the rds the relational yeah, databases i will make make sure that you will have a clear cut understand don't worry we we yeah. are having a very good practical on this okay yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, there is one more question I got that uh, is the same services will be will be provided by other cloud service. Of course, so the same services will be uh, so that so we will not have any control on the options that are in red. Yeah, of course, you don't have any control over the options that are in red. So every the same services. So this is related to the I am, I am just specifying it for the cloud. So these are the service models that are provided by the cloud. I am not specifying that these are the service models that are specified by the uh, AWS or else these are not the service models that are provided by the Azure. So I am saying to you, these are the service models of the cloud. Cloud means that you will have the AWS, you will have the Azure, you will have GCP, uh, GCP everything. So these are the service models that are provided by the any n number of service providers whoever are providing you the cloud. So everything in the red or else everything in the orange can be not handled by the users. So it is completely handled by the service providers whoever are the service vendors are there, they are going to provide that. So you don't need to worry about these things. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there any any another questions? Uh, hope you understand, funny. Is that clear? Fine. Uh, okay. Now, when we go back to this, uh, what are the different types of cloud? I will I will just go for a briefing about this, and then uh, we can wind up the session here. So, public cloud, and we will be having private cloud, and uh, we'll be having hybrid cloud. Now here, if I have to mention the public cloud, so can anybody ping me what is meant by public? Uh, I'm waiting for your responses in the chat box. Can anybody say what is meant by public? Yes, guys, fastest finger. Exactly, everyone will have an access, exactly, available to all, fantastic. So a public cloud is a type of cloud where we can have an access to, so all the clients can access these type of cloud. So what are the services that are provided by the cloud can be accessed by anyone. So the best example is AWS. If you are having an account in AWS or also if you are having an Amazon account, you can have the access towards your public cloud. And I can go with the Azure, yes, it is going to provide the access to each and every customer. Now, what is meant by private cloud? Yes, as you have given the answer, private cloud. Exactly. Uh, so data with a particular organization or else uh, any sort of services that will be bounded for a organization, any sort of services that can be provided by a single organization, any service that can be handled by an organization only, it is not going to share the uh, servers or else it is not going to share any virtualization with any another customers apart from the organization, then that is going to come under the private cloud. So within the organization, I can simply say that uh, within the organization or else within any company, so then that will comes under the private cloud. So if I have to give a briefing about that, now let me go back here, public cloud, a public cloud provider offering storage and computing services optimize their computing hardware and software support of these type of workloads. Now, if you have the definition, a public cloud is defined as a computing service provided by the third party providers over the public internet, making them available to anyone. So here, the most important thing is, 
so the service providers will be providing the services to the customers any customers all around the world through the public internet then that is called as the public cloud now what is meant by private cloud if you see here a private cloud is a cloud computing deployment model where the customer controls or owns the data center providing the ser cloud services so whoever are the customers the customer are going to have their own data center or else they will have their own servers then that will comes under the private cloud so they are not going to share this with the any another third party uh, customers or else any outside customers they are not going to provide the services to them then that will comes under the private so privately we are doing in the sense that's completely in a single uh, single organization so they are not going to say that now the next one is hybrid cloud the best example of the hybrid cloud is connecting or else combining the public services and private services will comes under a uh, public hybrid cloud so what is this connecting thing now if you think here for example let me show you like this if there is a uh, if there is this is my organization okay so inside an organization i am having a, a very big server or else a production server is there and in this production servers whoever are the clients they are accessing this production server and they are accessing the website and whatever the data that they want to store they can store this data now what i think is that uh, saving the data in only one server is not very good for me so what i have done i have migrated the data or else i have copied my entire data uh, into a public cloud so there is a uh, there is uh, i have taken a cloud access like aws access or else azure access, azure access and inside that inside the console i have created a server so i have purchased or else i have taken a rent of a server and now what i am doing i am transferring my entire data from my on premises server to my cloud servers uh, from on premises server to the cloud server i am transferring the data or else i am saving the data now the data is available in the on premises server which means in my physical server or else in my private location and as well as the data is also available in the public location this is also my my uh, so i am accessing both i am accessing the public cloud and as well as i am accessing the private cloud now this will comes under the hybrid cloud now this is the best example hope you understand what is meant by a hybrid cloud uh, now this is all about the different types of cloud services uh, a public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud where public cloud means the cloud services that are provided by the or else the that are provided to the entire public or else entire users through an public internet and a private cloud is a, is a cloud service that are provided within an organization then that is called as a private cloud and the services that are having the combination of both public cloud and private cloud will comes under the hybrid cloud so this is about your cloud services hope you understand the different types of clouds is there any doubts here yes uh, expecting an uh, reply from in the chat box hope uh, everything is clear is there any doubts okay fantastic can you give me some examples so the best example of public cloud is as i have given you aws and azure and all the things and for the private cloud alibaba will also comes under the uh, public cloud itself alibaba and uh, so uh, if you want the best example let me go here banka so uh, so remaining thing private cloud so if you go here so what are the different private cloud the company that provides the ibm systems ibm storage this will comes under the private cloud and netapp and uh, these are all comes under the so uh, the best example is simply if i have to say you the private cloud private cloud gurinchi uh, if i have to say that what is vpc how it is different from the private cloud uh, that we will discuss in the vpc concept don't worry i will make you i will make you a clearance of that don't worry about that but if, as we are discussing about the private cloud yes private cloud here if you see here now you are having an organization for example there is a proprietor now who has asked this question uh, can you pradeep yeah pradeep uh, so suppose if you have installed your company and this is your organization inside this organization you have installed a server room and inside this server room you are having multiple servers so these are the servers that you are having inside your organization 
and uh, these servers are connected to the storage. Now this is how your servers will be looking like. Inside that you are going to have a sandbox that is so storage area network and all the servers are connected to the sandbox so that you can have access towards your storage. Now, if in this company, so suppose this company name as uh, Pradeep Solutions. So this company, now there, there will be multiple servers and uh, each and every server, what are the customer data, all the customer data will be stored inside this uh, storage. Now who are accessing this? Only the employees who are inside your organization, they are going to access these servers and they are going to modify the whatever the requirement, but the customers can access this. Only the accessibility will be there. Application accessibility will be there, but they cannot access the servers. So this is the best example of your private server where you are not going to share your servers with any another vendors or else any another customers. When you come back to the public cloud, these servers or else these server, uh, whatever the virtualization and all the things, the storage, everything will be shared by the users. So that's the best example that I can give you. Is that clear? Anything you want to ask me about this? And the VPC, uh, Ravi, you have asked me about the VPC virtual private cloud. A virtual private cloud, if I have to define virtual private cloud, virtual private cloud is an isolated, uh, it's an isolated service that is provided by the Amazon, which will be, uh, which will be providing the security and isolation of uh, from one VPC to the another VPC that is deployed in the public cloud. So here it will be a little bit come uh, a little bit confusing, but once we get back to the VPC, you will have a clarity about that. For example, uh, just I want to give a briefing about this, and then we will wind up the session as the time is um, seven fifty. So just give me a second. Now, what is VPC? A VPC is a service that is provided by your Amazon. That's you know about that. Now, for example, Amazon is a public service, which means that there will be several companies which are taking or else which are having access towards this public cloud. Now, what you are going to do, you will be installing your servers in this AWS or else in the Amazon. So, for example, this is uh, these are the servers that are provided or else these are the servers that will be having access for the Ola company. Now, the Uber company, which is there, Uber. Now this Uber company is also going to take uh, servers inside your Amazon. Now, if you see here, in this, you are going to install the servers. So these are the Ola servers. For example, if as of time being, just think that these are the Ola servers. Now, in the same manner, Uber is also going to have their servers in the same vendor, with the same vendor, who is that Amazon, who with the same service provider. Now, if you see here, which type of service it is, it's a public service, which means that everyone can have their servers inside the Amazon. It's well and good. Now, my question is, if Vola, if Vola and Uber, both are the competitors and both are having access towards the public server. Now, if they are having the access towards the public server, if they are not isolated, which means that one server is not isolated with the another server, which, which means that what is meant by isolation that should not have any part of communication with the another. So one, one server should not have the communication with the another server which means that if these two are not isolated, then what will be happening? Now both the servers will have the communication and there might be a chance of security threat. So some of the data can be accessed by the Ola and some of the, some of the data can be accessed by the Uber. Now here comes the concept called as VPC. Here what happens? There will be, uh, there will be a virtual private cloud where it is going to isolate these servers belongs to this particular organizations and these servers belong to this particular organization. So we do not combine these two servers and these two servers should not have the communication. 
so there comes the virtual private cloud which means that you are going to deploy your servers in the public cloud but still they will be acting like a private cloud if you see here these servers belongs to ola only which means that those service or or else those people will be accessing these servers whoever are the ola ola employees they they can access these servers and these servers can be accessed by only the uber employees so here you are going to have the isolation which means that one company servers will not be communicating with the another company company servers so this is called as your virtual private cloud which is deployed inside your public cloud is it clear is there any doubts ravi so we will be having a in depth analysis we will be having a practical towards this vpc in the next uh, upcoming classes you don't need to worry about that you can have a clear cut understanding about that but as of now is the, is it clear is you have uh, do you have any doubt Ah, uh, regarding this, yeah, it is clear. Ah, uh, regarding resources, like it won't be sharing any resources, right? Ah, uh, no, no, no resources will be shared between one one VPC to the another VPC until the user requests. Okay. until until the user requires. So if the if the user requires, if one if a user of one VPC requires the resources to be communicated with the another another VPC, then that can be happen. so we are having vpc peering techniques we are having vpc transit gateway techniques with the help of these things we can have the communication between one vpc to the another vpc is it okay. clear yeah clear okay uh hope you understand the session if you have any doubts uh, uh, you can ask me or else uh, as the time has been going on it is going very fast okay so i have to end up the session over here uh and further clarification if you do, if you want anything clarification you can uh, you can reach out to the dudgasoft.com or else you can reach out to the uh, numbers now uh, what are the mobile numbers that has been provided in the dudgasoft website and uh, uh, the complete course curriculum is available over there so this is the day 2 of your uh, demos and tomorrow will be the day 3 the last demo of uh, your uh, cloud and from monday onwards who are has been registered for this course will be enrolled or else will be allowed into the classes hope you understand that and uh, yes uh, that's all of that that is what i want to say and uh, from monday onwards the url or else the login credentials might change login uh, login url might change so be uh, be cautious about that and uh, at the time of uh, at the time of your login before logging so please con please contact the durga shop to get that url whoever has been registered and who has cleared their dues or else who has cleared their fees please contact durga shop for the url so that you are going to get it out and i want more responses from you guys without your responses the classes will be very dry so my classes will be completely one to one session so whoever will be giving the answers they will have a clear cut understanding is that clear yeah chaitanya no. is it second class i was it was told me that it is first one uh it's this uh, yesterday we have started it so it's just a basics of uh, what is meant by cloud can i can i have that recorded Ah, sure, you understand. can have that. Uh, you, uh, you can, you can, you can reach out to the Dutch of uh, team, so they will provide you the recorded videos. You don't need to worry about that. I will inform them also one time. So you just reach out to them; they will provide the videos. Okay. Yeah. One more question. You said forty-five days, right? This is. Yeah, it's forty-five. Forty-five working days. Okay. I mean, Saturday and Sunday holidays, or only Sunday? Saturday and Sunday will be off. Two week off will be there. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. and the course curriculum will be available uh, with the durgasoft.com uh, everything is available over there please look into that uh, so that's all i will have winding the session right here and we will meet tomorrow and uh, we will have some exciting concepts uh, in the next class we are going to learn about networking concepts so have a nice day guys and bye thank you sir. yeah thank you
and uh, i'm chaitanya i will be the trainer for you the next uh, 45 days of classes aws classes so what we are going to learn in the aws and all the things that we will learn first of all the agenda of today's classes will be what is cloud and the second one is uh, so what is the cloud services or else what are the cloud services that we have to understand these concepts so uh, as per today's agenda we need to complete these two things before going for that so everybody will be nowadays everyone are uh, hearing the word called as cloud aws azure gcp all these things now if you see here what is meant by cloud before you understand these things you need to have a brief looking towards your infrastructure so before you uh, before you learn about cloud or else what cloud is actually so previously several years before or several years before everybody will say that a cloud is a storage cloud is a storage where we will be storing the data so only to store the data we use the cloud but as of now what is happening as the days go on and as the years pass on the cloud has introduced so many services so we will discuss about that anyways so a cloud storage a cloud is basically is all about the storage where uh, this for developers or devops anyways uh, this is completely for infrastructure as uh, as a, like we we are going to discuss the cloud uh, regarding the infrastructure this is all uh, regarding the devops itself so if you are learning it is completely only about aws we are not discussing about the devops whatever the uh, whatever the course that you are learning in the next 45 days that will be completely about uh, aws only it is not only not for the devops so the devops classes are different okay so you are a certified aws developers that's fine so then these classes are not meant for this uh, so you are looking for this anyways we will discuss about that uh, uh, we will ping it out anyways in the last 20 minutes of the time uh, last 10 minutes of the time will be for your questionnaire we will discuss all about all those things but as of now let us uh, dive into the uh, concepts that we are going to discuss okay anyways coming back to the next one uh, yep nothing much uh, that's fine uh, i will try to uh, clear out all your doubts uh, who are not having any doubts regarding the cloud we will discuss about all those uh, doubts in the next last 10 minutes of the session uh, where we are going to end at the time of ending of the session we will discuss about all those things don't worry now uh, when we go back to us uh, everybody are thinking that the cloud is a storage uh, in the previous days everybody are thinking that the cloud is a so simply if i have to say uh, the best example so many people will take as google drive or else uh, one drive or else somewhere like uh, microsoft drive so anything will comes under the cl cloud storage uh, they will thinking about that uh, i can store the data into, into the cloud but later on what happened the cloud has introduced so many services and before we go for the aws first of all you need to understand why we require cloud what is the necessity that each and every company nowadays what is the necessity that each and every company are looking forward for cloud so uh, so every every startup company or also every uh, small range of companies are looking for cloud engineers or also memens is also nowadays looking for the cloud engineers what is the necessity for that so before going for all those things if you are any engineer if you are an engineer in working in any it firm so everybody knows that for for running the it services you need to have servers so you need to have the servers and uh, you need to have network and then you need to have the security appliances or all security devices all these things you need to have the collaboration of all these things the collaboration of servers net network and security all these things will comes under a particular locality or a particular uh, what i can say particular uh, room of uh, servers then that is called as a data center where we are going to install all our servers so servers networking and security so what is meant by data center 
So if you need to understand this before going for the cloud, we need to understand the data center architecture. What is meant by data center? So a data center is a place where a large amount of server racks are installed. Inside those server racks, we will have the physical servers. So what is meant by this data center? Now, as I already said you, and this data center will provide you about servers and it in, in built to the data center, we will have the network and this will provide you the security devices. All the security devices will be present inside the data center. Now, how a data center will be looking like physically, physically how a data center will be looking like. So if I go here, So if you see, these are the server racks where your servers are getting installed. Is my screen visible to you? Is there any problem with the screen sharing? Yes, sir, visible, sir. No, it's visible. That's fine. So if you see here, these are the server racks or else these are the racks where inside your data center where all your servers are getting installed and not only the servers in these racks you can install the uh, networking devices like routers and as well as the security devices like firewalls everything will be installed inside these racks and all the racks are present inside a data center. Now, if I have to show you, it's a very, very huge uh, area. The data center is going to cover a very huge area. Uh, uh, if you see it in this picture, you can clearly visualize that how a how big the data center is all about. See there. Uh, so if you see the trucks and near the data center, see how they are looking like a small, small toy. So this is this big how a data center. Actually, it is like a it is a cloud data center. But when you compare to your uh, normal data centers, like normal company data centers, for example, if you are going to take about PCS or else if you're going to take about uh, uh, Wipro or else any small, any company data centers, they are relatively small compared to the cloud data center. But eventually what you are going to